Three others injured earlier today in the airport area following a firefight between security guards and unknown assailants. Well, behind the scenes, talks are taking place between NATO allies and the Taliban to keep Kabul airport open for evacuations beyond the end of this month. Well, France in particular is calling for more time. Well, France 24's Catherine Norris Trent is in Kabul with the latest on today's developments. All around the airport, there are crowds of people, thousands of people, as we've seen for days, gathering there in the hope of making it through and getting on board one of those military flights out. Um, a lot of the people there, it seems, are turning up just out of hope. They're people from Kabul and from other parts of the country who were displaced uh, when fighting took place earlier, a few months ago, a few weeks ago, when the Taliban took their towns and cities and have been sheltering in parks in the capital ever since. And so they say they're desperate, that they haven't really had enough food, water and basic things to survive. So they're gathering near the airport. The Taliban is trying to keep them away, trying to do crowd control. You know, we saw them whipping people. Report, uh, repeatedly, excuse me, firing shots in the air. Very chaotic scenes indeed. And then there's reports of a firefight as well uh, this Monday. So it, it very, very uh, difficult scenes there. The soldiers are really struggling with the crowd control in, in the searing temperatures. And they're struggling to get people who've had their paperwork approved through to the airbase. So they've now started chartering buses uh, and kind of trying to get them through town, through the Taliban checkpoints, kind of make agreements to do that and get them through military gates in the airport. So it's a very, very complicated logistical situation. In town, it's a whole other story. As soon as you're outside the airport, uh, it's Taliban land, so they are very visible on the streets at checkpoints all around the former green zone. They are now in control at the U.S. Embassy, you name it, all, all of the embassy buildings. They are stationed at regular posts. They also have patrol cars going around the city, keeping a very close eye on what's going on. And you've got these very confident, heavily armed young men who are no doubt ruling the roost. People are back on the streets somewhat. We're told it's not as busy as usual. You know, there's people out in the shops buying food, mostly men, it has to be said. There are women on the streets, but markedly fewer than in normal times, local people tell us. Uh, so they're, they're getting their provisions, but they're also having problems in terms of cash flow because the banks have been closed ever since uh, the Taliban took Kabul and people are running out of money. It seems money transfers are, uh, aren't working. So uh, things are calm for now, but it's getting uneasy for a lot of people in terms of their daily life. Catherine Norris Trent reporting there from Kabul. Well, U.S. President Joe Biden has insisted he wants to end the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan by the end of this month. Well, despite international pressure to extend that deadline, the Pentagon says the 31st of August deadline still stands. Our focus is on getting this done by the end of the month, Tara. Um, and uh, what we do here at the building, uh, at the Pentagon, is options. We, we, our job is to provide the president, the commander in chief, options. And as you heard the secretary say, if he gets to a point, he and, and Chairman Milley, they believe they get to a point where uh, they need to provide that ad advice and counsel to the president uh, about uh, an extension, then he'll do that. We just aren't there right now. And you heard the secretary say himself, if he had more time on the clock, he would absolutely use more time on the clock. But we're focused on getting this done by the end of the month. Okay, a Pentagon spokesperson there. Well, France 24's chief foreign editor Rob Parsons joins us now. Uh, Rob, what do you uh, consider the chances of an extension of uh, the presence of foreign troops there in Afghanistan? Well, listening there, it does sound as though the Americans are trying at least to keep their options open, although their clear preference is to be out by the 31st of August. On the other hand, too, uh, they're aware of the fact that there's a lot of dissatisfaction from their NATO allies about the lack of consultation uh, in the evacuation process so far, and that the, the British in particular, the French and the, and the Germans, are keen for an extension beyond the, the 31st so that they can get more people out uh, as well as getting their, their own troops out of Afghanistan. So there, there, there is that awareness and a desire on the part, I think, of the Americans to at least give uh, their allies some, 
some satisfaction. So on the other hand, of course, as we heard today from uh, a, a spokesperson for the, for the Taliban, uh, they appear to be saying that, as far as they're concerned, that August the 31st is a red line. If NATO forces, including the US, stay beyond that, uh, all options are on the table. What quite that means, we don't know, of course. You know, I suspect the Taliban will not particularly want to get involved uh, in a violent conflict with uh, allied forces on the ground, particularly at a time when they're trying to uh, portray an image of themselves as being changed more moderate than in the past and are absolutely in need of aid from the outside world. Uh, but the Americans at this point seem, at least for the moment, to be erring on the side of caution and, and suggesting they'll pull out by the 31st. On the other hand, we know that uh, G7 are having a virtual meeting tomorrow and a lot of pressure will be put on Joe Biden uh, from the Germans, the Brits and, and the French uh, to shift that date back by a few days. And Rob, just listening to what the Taliban has been saying, they say they're going to set about forming an inclusive government. How likely does that sound to you? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, I think, and very difficult to give a proper answer to at the same time. We, we know that, the, as you say, the Taliban are saying they want to have an inclusive government. They know how difficult it will be to govern si simply through coercion alone, given the fact that the forces that they have at their disposal are relatively limited, you know, 85,000 maximum uh, men under arms. Uh, and this is a country which is ethnically split along... Uh, a number of lines. You have in the West the Hazara, which have traditionally had a hostile relationship with the Taliban. In the North, uh, there's already a hint of conflict in the Panjshir Valley, uh, where the Tajiks are centered. Uh, you know, and they have been demanding a federal arrangement. Now, are the Taliban prepared to go down that route? Are they prepared to decentralize and let parts of the country slip, to, or to a degree at least, out of their control? And from another direction, we've heard a former president, Hamid Karzai, saying he is interested in, in talks with the Taliban about forming an inclusive government. And he's been, he's been trying with Abdullah Abdullah, the, the man who was leading the Afghan government's peace efforts, as well as uh, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, a former member of the Taliban, uh, to try and get, make contact with the Taliban. Some progress apparently has been made, but you know, at this stage it's not particularly clear uh, what the Taliban mean when they say inclusive. You know, how do they envisage that? We do know, as I was suggesting before, that they will be under immense pressure uh, because of the, 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 the the, the, the state of the economy, the finances are in ruin, most of the currency reserves of the country are outside of the country, uh, they are going to need international aid. They are going to need international recognition. So the question is, how far are they going to go uh, towards compromise? Yeah, well, thank you very much indeed for bringing us up to speed. Our Chief Foreign Minister, Rob Parsons, thank you so much. The Taliban have faced limited armed resistance, but there has been some resistance. Units of former Afghan government troops have gathered in an anti-Taliban bastion just north of the capital, Kabul. While well, the Taliban say their fighters have surrounded the Panjshir Valley, but they claim they're looking to negotiate with them rather than fight. France 24's Monty Francis has the latest. <laughs> This cell phone footage, independently verified by the Associated Press, shows heavily armed Taliban fighters in Afghanistan's Panjshir Valley. A spokesman for the militant group said it has the region surrounded and that, quote, the enemy is under siege in Panjshir. Located about 125 kilometers northeast of Kabul, the province is the last to remain under the control of government forces. So far, the Taliban has had little resistance from the ousted government, but in Panjshir, the opposition has promised a fight. The country's former vice president, Amrullah Saleh, is in the region, insisting that he is now the country's legitimate leader. And resistance leader, Ahmad Massoud, has said his forces are ready to take on the Taliban. Uh, the people of Panjshir Valley are very much united, and uh, they want to... Uh, defend and they want to fight and they want to resist against any totalitarian regime. 
Under the leadership of Massoud's father, a renowned guerrilla commander, the Panjshir Valley successfully resisted both the Soviet invasion of the 1980s and the previous Taliban takeover in the 1990s. While the opposition is vowing to fight, it is also calling on the Taliban to negotiate. And for its part, the Taliban has said it's open to talks. But with the stage set for a possible armed conflict, few analysts believe they could withstand a full Taliban offensive without international support.